Hello everybody, Joe Marquez here once again from the Sons of Technology, and I'm here to showcase for you a few things that I do in my Google Classroom to make the remote learning experience just a little bit uh, easier to handle for either our younger kids or just our students in general. Remember, in class, if a student, you know, if you if you put in an assignment or you put in some material into the classroom and there's a question about it, a student can raise their hand or come to you and say, hey, I didn't quite understand this. But in a remote learning classroom, we have to be very specific and give every opportunity for a student to either ask questions or enough resources from us, the educator, so that they don't need to ask questions because all their answers, all their questions have been answered by you ahead of time. So let me just jump into my remote learning classroom example. So underneath my classwork, I always put at the very top, and, and I do this for you know K-12 classes as well as the higher ed classes that I talk to, um, I put 24-7 office hours. Now, what this means is students can ask you a question at any time in, in the day, and you'll have a resource that can actually capture those. So let me show you what I've done. So I've actually created a resource uh, called 24-7 Office Hours, and that is through Flipgrid. And when the students click on this, it will take them right to this 24-7 Office Hours that says, in this topic, you can ask me any questions about the course or this week's assignment, blah, 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 blah. And they can record. Now, let me show you why I do this. Especially in a remote learning environment, it is extremely important that this, um, th this is being utilized because let me show you why. Because they can either ask you a question directly right here by, by clicking on the record button right there, um, or now that Flipgrid offers the screencasting, they can click on screen record and show you the problem they're having. And then you can respond to them with the screen recording on how to fix that. So I just find the new Flipgrid um, uh, abilities that they've added um, have really uh, allowed us to utilize this as a 24 seven office hours uh, opportunity. So um, I highly recommend having that and I always have this at the very top of my classroom. So at any moment, my students can ask me a question. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is um, we, we want to actually make it extremely easy for our students to find any work or assignments they need to do. And, and I find creating the week of topic to be the best course of action. So every week I create a new topic called the week of, and the very first thing I add to that week of is a back channel. And I do this because um, you, you could have students commenting on this assignment or that assignment, but if it's something, you know, that, you know, if, if it's something that a place that they can actually uh, ask a question about particular assignments right here, um, you don't have to go searching for those. Now, some may be asking, why do you have the Flipgrid and this? Our students have very different modalities in, in how they want to ask questions or how they want to perceive themselves. Some don't want to be on camera. Some don't like their voice. Some would rather just do it through text. So I love to give them as many options as possible. Now, when students come in here, um, the great thing about it is they can just ask a general question. Uh, I have a question, dot, 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 and it will go in just like that. Or you can tag somebody like plus and then it, all your students will pop up. Let's say I want to ask fake student number three a question. Fake student, um, did you find your answer? And we go in. And the reason that's key is because now that student will not only be contacted via Google Classroom, but also through email. And conversely, it works with a student. Let's say our student is here in this back channel and they want to talk to me. They go, plus, Mr. Marquez, my name will automatically pop up. How do we dot, dot, dot. And that communication will go directly to me. And I want to show you, and I, I, we made a video on how to do this, so you can definitely show that streamlining communications within Google Classroom. But what it does is it automatically sends it to my email, and I've labeled whenever one of those emails come in, I label it um, with this Google Classroom uh, moniker so that I know it's directly a comment from Google Classroom. It just helps me stay in contact with my students. And I love it to be in this back channel because it could be a string of those for the class. And I, keep, I, I create a new back channel every week. So I, I retire the previous channel. The next thing I highly recommend is creating an agenda for that week. Now in this agenda, it's, it's important to notice that this agenda is, is, is here as a quick run through 
of what the students are sh should be accomplishing during this week. Notice I don't have when it's due. All I'm saying is, hey, I'm going to post this at the beginning of the week, and I, I would love for them to be finished by the end of the week. Now, I always recommend posting at the same time on the same day, um, definitely at least on the same day, so your students aren't questioning, when is it going to appear? When is this agenda going to happen? So I would recommend always posting your agenda for your for the week coming up on Sunday nights and, and ask the students to get them done by Friday. And always be flexible and understanding if a student doesn't get things done on a Friday, especially in a remote environment. Just encourage them to, to, to get them done. Um, but, but have understanding that, you know, remote learning life happens so we have to be aware of that I also like to include emojis uh, in part of the description it just makes it easier to understand so under important info I can say like don't forget dot 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 if I wanted to in this agenda I can say number one um, read a chapter dot 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 I can come down here and I say respond to dot, dot, dot. So whatever you want to do, I would have that in. And the important thing is I keep this ungraded. Ungraded because it's just a quick response, but I do want the students to be able um, to mark it as done because that's kind of like my attendance for the week. Like, hey, I'm going to be checking attendance on Mondays. Just make sure you've read it by the end of the day. Once again, I don't put a due date on it. I don't do anything like that to get them in, to, to get them any kind of trouble for not getting it done. It's just good practice to keep them into normalcy of checking every Monday and getting things done every Friday. And you may be asking, how do you get those emojis? Um, on all the Chrome browsers now above, I believe it's above 80, you can right click and there's going to be an emoji button there and you can actually type. So let's say you're doing um, something about science. I could come in here. It can be a rocket. Um, I can say, let's say it's a microscope. I can say MIR. Here's a microscope and boom, it replaces it with a microscope. So you can, you can have these icons to have, especially your littles, a better understanding of, of what topic they're going to be learning. And, and you can also see the video of how to add emojis to uh, your titles and to your topics um, in another video we have on our YouTube channel. Um, and one more thing that is really important um, is in including some video into this. And I love using Screencastify because it's quick and easy and simple. So let me show you what I've done. What I've done is I, I click on Screencastify and what I do is I just hit record. And when I record, um, I'm going to be recording my screen. So let's say I'm recording this screen right here. I always keep this video on because I want the students to know it's me talking and they can visualize me talking. So I'm going to click share. And so now it's sharing three, two, one. And I would say to my, my students, okay, hey, everybody, you know, don't forget that we have this project due in, in a couple of weeks. So make sure you're checking in with your group partners to make sure everybody's getting everything done. Um, for this week, you know, by Friday, I would love for you to have read chapter, blah, 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 blah. And then make sure you respond to our Flipgrid response on reading that chapter. For science, make sure you're doing blah, 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 and working through some of these FET activities that we have for you. And so this is what we would do. And we talk to the students and go through it. And then we hit stop sharing. And the great thing about Screencastify is there's no need to download, there's no need to save it anywhere. It automatically saves to your Google Drive. And as soon as it is done uploading to the Google Drive, what we're gonna do is click on copy shareable link. That is extremely important because we want the students to be able to view the video. So I click copy shareable link, copy it, and I post that right down here under the add link file. I paste that in, add link, and now we have the video there for them. And we make sure we leave it as students can view the file. And now I'm going, going to click save. Now I'm going to jump in to another one of my fake student accounts so you can see what this looks like. So here's fake student. He comes in here. Oh, what's the agenda? And he can read the agenda right here. If he wants to watch the video, he'll click on the video right there. And but trust me, by the time the students get to it, it will be rendered and ready to go. But everything that we had just done is now ready to be watched. I would, so now you have the kids. Oh, what, what did he mean by that? Or, or maybe you're just typing so much. And this is just another way to make sure that students understand what you are asking for them to do. And I highly recommend you add one of these videos to all of the activities you are having your students go through. Very important because you're not there to clarify anything. And so by adding these videos, it helps to be like you, you are there. You're that personal tutor who is there to answer questions they may have. And the big thing about the students is every Monday, we want them 
to come in here and mark this as done. Mark it as done. And this is our attendance check. And as the teacher, you can come over here into your grade book. And even though it is not being graded, we can see who has, I'm doing air quotes, turned it in as who has checked in on that Monday. That's like their big activity on Monday. Make sure you're reading the agenda and make sure you are checking in. And when you are done with that, of course, you can then either post all the activities um, underneath as attachments. If we go to edit, we can start adding more or we can create uh, templates for them all the way down. Um, but um, I, I would recommend adding the, own, your, the, the assignments for each one just because then you can uh, speak to through Screencastify what, each, whatever, what needs to be done for each assignment. And trust me, once you get this Screencastify thing down, it's really simple and it's really short um, to get there. And, and remember, if you are... Um, if you have multiple classes, right? If you're a secondary teacher and you have the same course, but multiple times, um, you can definitely come in. And when you are, are posting this for the first time, um, you can always assign it to all your classes at once. So just keep that in mind. So let me give you an example. Let's say that the very next thing is we are going to have our students do a activity. So I go to create, I go to assignment, and I'm going to say, go over the FET activity and tell me what you have learned. And a FET activity is great. It's from FET.colorado.edu. And so let's say that we are talking about um, number line integers. All we would have to do is give them this link and add that as a link right there. Done. And then we'd add the instructions. And then of course we would record a Screencastify video and attach, attach that as well. Definitely make sure you're changing the points. I'm going to put this ungraded right now. And if you want to do it to all your classes at once, I highly recommend it. And I always recommend that you create something called the sandbox or playground classroom. It's just for you. And I would always send my assignments there and I'll, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And so let's say that we're done and this make sure it's underneath the week of topic and I hit assign. And so it is now available for my students right down here. Now, what about next week? Well, I'm going to come in here, create a topic for next week, week of April 13th through 18th. I'm going to add that in. And here's the thing. I always want the newest week at the top. So I will move this up here. And then um, notice here's that back channel. I don't have to recreate the wheel. I'm going to click reuse from my classroom. I want to reuse the back channel. I click reuse. It has everything already set. I change it from the week of the 6th to the 13th and I click post. And now we have that done. And then also I'm going to reuse the agenda and just delete that agenda and add my new one. So I hit create, reuse post, my agenda. And I'm going to bring it here for, to the 13th to the 18th. And then I would just change up whatever new thing we're doing. I would add my new Screencastify video. Um, once again, you can add it to all your classes at once if you wish. And then I go ahead and click assign. But make sure it's from not that week, but the next one. Assign. So you can definitely do it this way. And I highly recommend you leave at least two or three weeks of activities up so that in case if you do have any students who uh, didn't get things done, um, um, they have time to make it up. And, and the reason, because you want to make this classroom as simple as possible. And if you leave every single week there, it's just going to get longer and longer and longer, even though you have this topic kind of um, topic chapter list kind of right here, it's still going to get longer and longer and longer. And so what I recommend is, after, after, let's say that April 6th, let's say it's May now, you don't need that anymore. You're going to go ahead and click delete. And we're going to delete the topic and, and uh, make sure we delete all the assignments underneath it as well. I really wish if you deleted the topic, it also deleted all of the activities. And 
And the great thing about that is you have all your deleted topics here. So if you ever want to go back to that back channel chat to see what they were talking about, it's all still saved there for you, but you only have access to those deleted posts. If I go back to my student account right over here, notice it is now, it is now, let me hit reload. It probably didn't take effect yet. It is now cleaned up and it just makes it easier for them to go and there is no deleted post down at the bottom. The reason that I, I told you to, to definitely have like this sandbox or playground classroom just for yourself is because if you do delete something, you can no longer reuse it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I come in here and I wanted to reuse, I wanted to reuse um, this FET activity template. I go, okay, I, I wanna do another FET activity. Go to create, click reuse. It's not there anymore. Because once you delete it, you don't have the option to reuse it. But if you posted it to not only your class, but then your, your playground class, then if I wanna reuse it, I can just go to my playground and then re reuse it from there. Um, so that's a good technique of how you can still delete and then still reuse. And you, there's no way to undelete it. You can't like click on it and say undelete. There is no undelete option once you've deleted something. So it's a great practice to have a little playground sandbox uh, classroom where you just post all your assignments there. So if you ever do want to clear the clutter, you have access to, to reuse any of those past assignments. And you know what? I, I know this was one of my longer videos for you. Um, and I know there's a lot more Google Classroom tips that are out there, but I appreciate you taking a listen. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please definitely contact me at Joe Marquez 70 uh, on, uh, on Twitter. Um, or you can contact the, uh, the entire Sons of Technology team at Sons of Tech EDU. Thank you so much for everything you do for your students. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn these Google Classroom tips and tricks. And you have yourself a wonderful day.